So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where the German Empire returns in modern day. Now the German Empire was a very interesting place back in the 1900s and the borders of this empire are very sexy. So what would exactly happen if we returned in modern day in 2023? Well the world would be confused for the first part and second part well a lot of countries would be angry about this because obviously a lot of countries have lost land like Poland, France, and Denmark. Now obviously when you get a lot of land you also get a lot stronger. So would the German Empire try to expand or would it just be peaceful what would its reactions be with nato and russia and so on and so forth would it try to do what it did in world war ii again probably so if you do enjoy this video make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new just because we hit 100k a couple weeks ago does not mean that i want you guys to stop subscribing because there's also a million which i don't think we're gonna get there but you never know and of course 200k 300k so on and so forth so if you are new and you enjoy the content make sure to hit that subscribe button and let's go ahead and just jump straight into this video so the german empire is back and what's it going to be doing it's going to be uniting all of the germans oh boy so the german empire declares war on austria a neutral country and just to make this video a little bit more fair for germany and more interesting of course none of the major world alliances are going to exist so nato the uh, common common turn oh my god what time period am i in russia's alliance csco those things are non-existent so no one can stop germany unless it's a giant coalition german troops first enter over here into northern austria with the goal of reaching vienna and taking the capital city a spearhead emerges across the front line going over towards vienna while another flank heads down south in order to secure more austrian lands now there are the alps right here so we're going to try to kind of acknowledge those uh, usually i do like to ignore geography and hey speaking of ignoring geography make sure to check out the merch which is only going to be up for the rest of march i decided to expand the deadline because i haven't really been promoting it that well so i want to make sure that you guys have the opportunity to buy it if so so the 100k celebration merch will be out until the end of march early april of course you're seeing all the designs on the screen right now we also have channel memberships you can sign up for if you're interested tons of perks with that and yeah the 100k celebration is still going on i just haven't had time to record all the other videos and of course there's still trying to you know keep the channel alive with everything that's going on right now basically i'm going through a midlife crisis at the ripe age of 16. if you didn't know i was 16 go watch a q a video there's actually a lot of information in the video anyway uh germany doing german things this spearhead is unstoppable as austria barely has a military to stop it the germans flood the north and eventually the capital city is taken and along with a lot of austria actually with this austria is literally just a mountain and mountains are not governments so the mountain surrenders in this piece right here oh that's well oh, poland be careful uh but yeah austria is annexed by germany and czechia is um well they're not happy youtube recently changed its policy to where you can swear now uh, a lot more freely oh i wish i really wish what we just lost power no come back oh god oh my god okay i think we're good with this uh odd event happening i do want to uh suggest or not suggest tell you guys that i'm going to be upgrading my equipment soon plan on getting a new microphone and a new web camera because this thing is um not very good so what does germany do well they do exactly what they did in world war ii ultimatum czechia is like okay you know let's, let's accept this and see what happens so the sudetenland yeah that's totally sudetenland is seated over the germany even though it's definitely not the sudetenland it's just random lines that i drew but that's all seated over to germany and uh we see a much similar event happening in world war ii with germany just going ahead breaking that deal and invading the rest of czechia i will spare you the gore so now germany is looking a lot more like the whole whole Hol holy roman empire which ruled central europe a couple years ago but with germany now being very large they are probably one of the larger countries in europe ignore russia and ukraine maybe even the these guys they're, they're definitely big and that's something that's not good a big germany is never a good germany just ask europe so now with germany being plump they want to get plumper plumper is definitely not a word actually it might be i don't know i'm not good at my own language if you can't tell they're going to invade poland and poland is like you 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 but not just germany apparently belarus wants some of that and ukraine that's odd ukraine war doesn't exist in this timeline by the way also congrats on ukraine for passing one year of being alive that's honestly impressive but also not surprising because russia sucks but with poland being absolutely pancaked here uh yeah, they're gonna get pancaked we have the germans coming in from the north and the west the belarusians in from the northeast and the ukrainians in from the southeast what is there to do in this scenario other than uh, surrender well nothing so you surrender only the germany though that's going to create a lot of border disputes with belarus and ukraine germany and ukraine are able to work something out but belarus is a stubborn little um man and they're going to uh they're gonna create some issues 
But first, let's look at this peace treaty and then we'll address the issues. All right, so here's the peace treaty here. And as you can see, Germany and Ukraine have everything worked out. But Belarus, you, you just couldn't handle it. You had to go ahead and claim a little bit of Germany, didn't you? And now Belarus is going to deal with the might of the Germans. After a quick little conquest up north, Lithuania, I apologize. Germany really wants to roll east and that's honestly never worked for them before. So I highly uh, just... I just kind of condemn this. Don't do this. You don't want to do this. This is not a good idea for you to survive if you're trying to survive. If you want to die, then go ahead. So Germany declares war on Lithuania and oh, Belarus, you really shouldn't do this, but you are. Belarus also does it. Now, of course, Germany is a stronger country here, so they're going to go ahead and just take a majority of the land. But Belarus just had to get involved now, didn't they? Some uh, shooting happens up here and the skirmish takes place and Germany says, this is your fault. We're invading you now. The Belarusians are immediately kicked out of Lithuania and from here, they're immediately kicked out of their country. No, seriously, a mass migration of Belarusians move over to Russia because apparently that's a better place to live. Actually, it probably is. So now with the German army asserting itself, uh, the Belarusians are going to fall back and even the military is going to migrate to Russia and this leads to the Belarusians to surrender. Now Germany has itself a lot more land than it originally wanted and they're gonna go ahead and divide it up with themselves and Ukraine because Ukraine's pretty chill. I didn't say that, the leader said that. So now looking at Germany and Ukraine, Ukraine obviously has gained a lot of land here, but Germany is spanning all the way over to almost Russia now. And actually they're spanning to Russia because Belarus just joined Russia. What chance do they really have? Let's be honest. So yeah, from France to Russia. And oh, speaking of France, they just did something stupid. France declares war on Germany because you know what? We want the Rhineland back. France's strategy with this? Um, well, the Germans are over here and we are right here. Therefore, we can go over here and meanwhile, they're going to be over here. Eventually, we can get to here before they can get to there. And if we get this, that means we win. We get this. France is good. Except it's not that easy. France starts a coalition against Germany. And Ukraine immediately joins on the side of Germany because they're all good pals now. In response to this, France gets its buddies on Germany. This includes Luxembourg, Belgium, and Netherlands. Super powerful countries there. Really going to help out. But oh wait, there's one more. Denmark. That's a real game changer now, isn't it? So with Germany at war with the West, quite literally, they are going to, um, well, it's going to take a bit, but they might get a little bit of uh, invaded going on. I, what, what am I even saying? The French and the Beniluxians, Benelux, Benelux, Beniluxians? The Lowlands, they all work together here to invade Germany. They capture a pretty big city, also known as Frankfurt. I didn't forget. And move along the German coast. Denmark does something, that's surprising. This eventually becomes one big front and Germany seems to be a little uh, confused on how to not let this happen. Their troops are right about here, which means France's plan to get to Berlin has already failed and um, it's not gonna get too pretty soon. Eventually the red team meets up with the Germans and from here, war, if you didn't notice. The Germans take the initiative to take back Frankfurt, probably the smartest thing they could do. So they finally get back that city, but from here, it's kind of stalemated a little bit. They do make some gains along the northern border against the Netherlands and Denmark, eventually splitting them up, but it's winter time, it's cold, and attrition sets in. France has a nice little bulge right here. And come springtime, there's once again little movement as the Germans are simply tired of always fighting. The red team pulls off a pretty massive counter invasion, 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 invasion to take back Frankfurt and also pull out towards the middle of the country. From here, German troops are starting to go home and Germany does not like that. But oh, thank God, someone else is here to help out Germany and that somebody is good old England, also known as the UK. I am so sorry to all the Scots, the Welsh, and the Northern Irelanders and I just offended. But with the British in the war now, France is having flashbacks to D-Day. It's time for E-Day or F-Day because I already made that joke. The Brits outpower the French Navy and eventually make a landing in Normandy. With this landing, they establish a pretty large front sweeping down into the center of France. They go down and meet the coast and eventually take out Brittany. And now the British are gonna stop because they're not strong enough to continue. Germany finally gets their stuff together and pushes back the Netherlands. From here, they're able to cut back on their French fry and take and push out the Danes up north. They start to sweep through the lowlands as they enter into the Netherlands and eventually meet up with the British in Brussels. From here, we have a pretty large encirclement being made, wiping out tons of troops. Eventually, all of the French are kicked out of Germany. Now comes the fun part. The Germans go in from the north and take Paris, while the Brits focus in on the coast. Eventually, they're able to push in from the Rhineland. And from here, we have a full-on collapse of France, as the French are nowhere to be seen on the French line, on the French line, on the front line, because they're all most likely fleeing to Spain or Italy. Eventually, the French government surrenders, and we have ourselves a war between the blue team and Denmark. Five hours, not six. Five. Let's take a look at this pretty big peace treaty. Looking at this treaty here, Germany is now becoming Europe as they have taken over all of the lowland countries in Denmark and a good chunk of France. 
Now, the Britain, of course, they have also taken over a uh, considerable amount of northern France. It's looking like the good old days in Europe, except they weren't the good old days because everyone was dying of disease and war. But hey, um, now we have an alliance. Can't tell it's between the Germans, the British, and the, and the Ukrainians. But that doesn't really matter because um, the Germans are the main subject of this video. And they're going to send a few ultimatums down here to the Balkan countries, specifically to Slovakia, Hungary, and Slovenia. And graciously, they all accept um, pleading for their lives, essentially. Germany's taking on a lot of land here, and honestly, it probably isn't too healthy. They need to lose some weight, but they're going to keep going until they explode. Now we have a German and Ukrainian coalition against Moldova and Romania, as well as Serbia and Croatia, because why not? The Ukrainians, along with a lot of Germans, immediately flood into Romania and take Bucharest. From here, Germany takes over Croatia and has no problem chopping up in through to Serbia and Romania. And all in all, when everything's over, it is red team victory, of course. Let's look at peace treaty. All right, well, uh, Ukraine just ate all of Romania and Moldova, and Germany just ate all of Croatia and a good bit of Serbia. Interesting. So now the German ukrainian uh alliance also britain's in there too but they're not that relevant uh, it's getting kind of scary and people are not liking it however that's the end of this video just kidding well not i mean it's the end of the mapping part of it but just hear me out i got something to say it's important big news exciting news the play button is almost here by the time you're seeing this i'm going to have the play button in my possession i mean of course i can't show now because i'm recording this on thursday but just do know the play button will be here when you're seeing this video and uh of course i'm gonna do a whole video on that in that video i also plan to show off my dogs because a lot of you guys have been wanting to see the dogs and uh, i think it's finally time you see the dogs why do you want to see the dogs i don't know but you get to see them in that video you also get to see me unboxing the play button and saying a bunch of words that's what all these videos are anyway right anyway the german empire is um very large is it stable probably not the italians are very jealous the french are non-existent and everyone else is scared rightfully so would this actually happen if the German Empire came back in 2023? Absolutely not. I don't know what would happen because that probably is improbable. It's not impossible, just improbable. So you never know. But would it expand as much? Obviously not. Of course, NATO and the UN would be there to stop it. Russia, I'm sure, wouldn't allow it. And there's just a lot of factors that would pre prevent this from happening. Now, this is a fictional scenario. So don't like pee the bed about it because it's not that big of a deal. It's just a map lines changing and stuff but hey yeah if you enjoyed it make sure to leave a like on this video subscribe to the channel if you're new help me afford the new equipment because it's going to be expensive i want to do youtube for a long time but honestly uh that is a uh, that's a lot and you know in order to make myself do that for a long time it has to be sustainable new equipment will help me sustain it because higher quality is also always better and uh, honestly the my recording studio aka my room is not very big it's not good enough for what i want to do so we're gonna have to wait a couple more years until i can like move out and get my own place and get my own studio and that's when we'll be peak eight is pro i don't know if we'll be doing mapping but it will be peak eight is pro maybe we've actually already kind of missed peak eight is pro i don't know Hopefully not. Maybe there's a lot more to come. I don't know. Just dependent on if I can get you guys to stick around and if I can pull in the new guys like a fisherman. You know, casting a reel out there is a little bit mapping video. Got a bite. Mm. Mm. Reel them in. Mapping video. Yeah. There's going to be some other bait thrown out there too, like gaming videos and such and such. Uh, I just ask you guys, give them a chance. Don't don't freak out because I'm not going to get rid of mapping until I can like or until I can either sustain gaming or I can like balance the two out. Mapping won't be going away, so don't freak out. Everything's fine. I'm just trying out some new stuff because mapping is getting a little bit old. It's also getting repetitive, and I hate being repetitive. Speaking of repetitive, subscribe to the channel. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Here are the channel members. Thank you to all the super fans. This includes Yo Moma Moma, Texan Cowboy Cheese, Kali Speaks Plays, Maddox Gore, Poland Country Ball, Dimitri, Yakko, Nevada Garbage Trucks, DW Cool Dude, All About Military, Soviet Ball, and Serminator. Once again, thank you guys.